it's adding on let's wait because once the numbers get stable then we will have it because technical let's wait we'll just wait for one more minute and then start we welcome you all to the export uh, compliance knowledge session by amtoy along with triple fai and bcba um, this is going to be a fantastic session a lot to learn from the experts of the industry and we request all of you to please place your questions only on q and a box so that we can take up it at the end of the session so over to shantanu sir thanks priya and welcome everyone from the participation which is rising we can see this will be one of the most successful session we had and the only reason why we have such a wonderful response and participation is because of our faculty shankar shinde is the chairman of triple fai he is also chairman of ifcba so we can say he is the senior most leader in our industry today and i have known him for last 20 years and i think we couldn't have looked for a better person for this position following him is dushan who is president of bcba and uh, chairman elect or senior vice chairman of triple fai he is more often in customs for doing others work than he is in office or customs to do his work when i say others this includes associations which includes associations where he is president vice chairman but equally we have taken dushan to customs and cbic the board for amto issues so he has been a great source of network for us so we have two eminent speakers and all i would like to say about the topic is these are issues of our livelihood these are real time real issues as are reported to cbi cba amtoy please don't be under impression bad things happens to others and not to us it can happen to everyone we have all gone through it and being in federation association we get such reports every day these are times when you have to be careful and when i say careful i have been working since 1981 so that's 42 years and today i find working very harder not just working is harder we are actually under stress of not making any mistakes so it's very critical that every single person is well trained and today cblr regulations clearly specify that any g card holder himself is accountable in personal capacity so i 
who advise everyone who is not the owner but the card owner or any other card owner to be very careful please avoid multitasking concentrate on what is at the proceeding so that you don't put yourself in trouble your company in trouble your customer in trouble so with this i would say i would just like to have three more introductions the uh, introduction was done by priya she is amtoy nrc northern region convener upcoming leadership in amtoy same with arun is honorary secretary and vasan who is western region co convener and all of them are active in our training institute or training sub committee please contact them and contact them 24/7 make them work for you contact them for any difficulty i can assure you they will be the most responsive people with this i think i go back to priya for taking the meeting forward or the webinar forward we have we also have mr shrimali here so can i request uh, shankar sir to introduce him and uh, also say a few words uh thank you priya in fact welcome shrimali sir and uh, mr shantanu ji who has been also the chairman of triple fa president of amto and the industry leader who everybody are aware of and who has also been the past chairman of ifcb heading on various organizational leadership we are just his follower he is our mentor from time to time we have been taking the advice to take it forward thank you shantanu ji for your kind introduction along with along with us we also have amto team uh mr arun ji priya ji vasan ji and thanks to mali ji for joining us at the juncture which is a very important uh seminar in fact this webinar will uh, bring us very seriousness about the issues and it is you none other than you who can really showcase as to how serious the issues are so thanks for joining us uh, my colleague mr dushyant ji and also my uh, members uh entire members and triple fm members who are joining on the webinar thank you for joining is important this shows the numbers of participants who are joining the uh, webinar shows the seriousness what the trade is really having today and facing and how important it is for the entire to have this session and sensitize members as to how it really works and what are the important aspects of exports we just take it for granted government is completely under persuading and trade facilitation measures in promoting exports at the same time customs is also under the pressure to facilitate all the exports and we as a custom brokers or the uh, logistics service provider are always under the pressure from both the sides why the exports can be held up why it has to be hold up and the compliance level on the other side so we try to facilitate the trade within the law compliance of the framework of the legal framework of the law so how to balance this both the aspect is the most important uh, thing what i see and that is why we thought we having this webinar is a very important and thanks to mp for organizing this webinar my dear friends i would request you to take this very seriously because when cb speaks to any of the customers or the friends or the colleagues in the industry it is not taking that seriously and other than taking it seriously they are pressuring no you get it clear and everything is in order without getting into the uh, without getting into the seriousness of the issues and later on they fill the pinch there are important steps which you should have a complete checklist on each and every document before you accept any documents while you are running down the shipments and post shipments so all this pre methodology has to be adopted has to be done with a due diligence checklist which you will undergo during the webinar session which mr dushan my colleague will explain you in detail and let us have a deliberation if there is something which is not able to pursue or not able to understand we are here to under we are here to explain into detail my dear friends this will help us to gain confidence within the customs also and within the trade also so it is very important when we do our homework properly i think so then that is the best thing what we can where, where we can showcase our services and our strength to the customs who can rely upon us as an assessing officer because under the self assessment the responsibilities are just be passed from the customs to us 
and then we stand as an assessment officer, as an equivalent assessment officer, where we need to take that cognizance of the seriousness of the issues when it comes at the later stage. The EU programs which are being implemented makes us more responsibility and accountable as we form the part of the compliance and yes, we have to play a very important role in the whole system. Any missions, any mishandling, any compliances which you go uh, against it or by any of the stakeholders who are in the whole supply chain system, it affects not only as an individual, but it affects the organization, the organization, the stakeholders in the whole supply chain and not limiting to that, it also affects the families of the organ or organization who are working in that industry. So my dear friends, as we have a good advantage being on the uh, WCO platform, we have a good advantage of taking it to the PSCG, to the World Custom Organization. From time to time we do have such meetings. If we are not able to sort out here, we will try to adopt the best practices across the world and also propose to our government uh, with the CBIC as to what is the best practices we can adopt in gender. With this, I would like to conclude here and request Priya to take it forward. Thank you, Priya. You are muted, Priya. Yeah. So over to Dushanji or uh, over to Dushanji for the presentation. So, uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, thank you, M. Toy, uh, Mr. Zaksis Master, President, IPP, Mr. Shantanu Bhatkamgarji. We have Mr. Arun. Uh, Arun Kumar, who is the Honorary Secretary, uh, Ms. Priya Anil Thomas, Northern Region uh, Convener, Mr. Vasan Pata, uh, Western Region Convener, all friends, and the biggest guest of all today with us, uh, Deputy Commissioner of Customs, uh, Shri, Mr. Srimali Suresh sir, is currently posted at Air Cargo Complex, Mumbai, and I must thank him for helping all of us out to carry out this particular uh, presentation, giving guidance and the finer points which uh, are affecting the entire logistic service providers, that is, uh, custom brokers, forwarders, NVOCCs, consolidators and what care should be taken in that. Uh, uh, again, uh, the entire members of FFA and BCBA for their constant inputs to evolve uh, and come up to this particular stage for formulating compliances for exports. So before I start, uh, this was about last year that we had one session with CBIC. It was a webinar and uh, it was on compliances. It was being discussed somewhere last November. Uh, so few of our uh, industry friends had joined the webinar. I happened to check with few of our other friends uh, who did not join. So I asked them why are you joining this particular important uh, webinar it's, uh, regarding compliances, understanding of law, regulations and the proce procedures whether we are undertaking our processes back end are compliant or not. Uh, friends being friends, so the app came the reply, exports is very easy to handle compared to imports. We are handling exports. So we are not that much worried about compliances and uh, that is where I told them, it set me off thinking. I discussed the same with our uh, committee first in BCBA and then in Triple FA under leadership of uh, Shankar Bhai. Uh, he guided us that yes, this is the time where we need to urgently formulate a presentation, a guidance session for all of our members in, in uh, for exports. So we did the same back end 
and BCB and Triple FA are part, uh, both four of our members. Was discussing the same with Mr. Shantanu Bhatkamkarji, and he said that no, this is most vital. Last 24 months, all of us have gone through some notices, some shokos, some, uh, some inquiry pertaining to exports. And we came across the idea that yes, we need to work this out on priority. And in our taxation committee employ, Arunji was the one to uh, push us. And then came Priyaji. She said, okay, yes, let's get ahead. And that's how we've come across this presentation. So we'll first go back before I get Mr. Shimali sir on for uh, seeking his guidance. There are some important checks and balances which we need to work out internally. So what are the checks and verifications that we need to work out? First and foremost, as logistic service providers, as custom brokers, as forwarders, as uh, if you are issuing your bill of lading, what we need to know that who is the exporter because he is the fulcrum around whom the entire export transaction is being carried out. What is the product he is exporting? What is the kind of know the transaction? What is the transaction he is entering into? Whether it's he is claiming drawback, he is claiming any export incentives, he is showing the remittance or he is showing that as free of charge. What is his establishment? Is he a company? Is he a partnership firm? Is he a LLP? Is he a proprietorship company? Is he a trust? These are various checks and balances which you can verify which will come on the subsequent slides and discuss them in detail. Checking the digital verification modes is very crucial. This is the present day advantage that all of us have as a logistic service provider, as a custom broker, as a forwarder, as a entity where we are issuing our bill that what this exporter is. We can verify it digitally. We'll come to it in the subsequent. And finally, the country of destination. This matters a lot, friends. There are in the customs EDI system, there are high risk countries, middle risk countries, and low risk countries. So it is very crucial that business that you are handling is destined, the transaction is destined to which country. And if it is a among the high risk countries, your scrutiny levels, your compliance levels should be that much more stringent. And if you are in doubt, learn to say no for that particular transaction and return back the papers back to exporters or wherever you got the papers from. Carrying out of KYC, this comes from CBIC, Central Board of Indirect Taxation and Customs uh, Circular. It's a mandatory requirement. Now, we'll learn further down in our program today that verification of identity has also been incorporated in Section 99B of Customs Act. And it covers up entire set of logistic players. Ideally, communication, if you are handling custom clearance and uh, issuing your own document for transport, 
प्लीज इंश्योर दैट के वाई योर कम्युनिकेशन योर नॉलेज अबाउट योर एक्सपोर्टर्स एंटीसीडेंट एवरीथिंग इज नोन टू यू पर्सनली Do not enter a transaction if it is in Miami. Uh, if he has been referred from here and there, unless you are sure and confident about the exporter you are handling, be careful. Next, if the exporter uh, this transaction has been referred to you by few of your other friends. All other service providers like your forwarder or uh, your overseas agent, please ensure in such circumstances also establish link for communication regarding this transaction and take an authorization. Commercially, it may sound a bit far fetched, but Way compliances have become stringent. It is very essential that you are in direct communication for the export transaction. Obtain authorization to handle the work. Next, verification of exporter. Where is he registered with? If he is a company, a register of companies, it's a partnership uh, outfit, register uh, uh, register of firms. Where you will get entire details about directors, partners, owners, and you will come to know lot of digital trail of that particular organization. The next which comes in is import export code number details. It's available on IEC uh, uh, DGFT site. The next is exporter premises details, which is registered there when you are handling that transaction on GST portal. Please ensure that you save this particular screenshot. Or it may sound bit conventional, but take a printout, keep it in the file. That when you handle that transaction, what was the exporter's premises which was registered at that point of time in GST portal? Keep it there with you. It will be a very valuable piece of paper in case of any. Uh, Demand shokers notice issued or any investigation being done at a later stage post shipment. Next, check whether exporter has filed GSTR 1, 2A, 3B, 9, 9C. These are again very important transactions. Friends, we have compiled these, these details after going through what our members have gone through it. But when customs verifies, when they carry out the investigation, when they prepare the Shoko's notice, when they prepare the investigation report, what are the factors customs will check about the exporter? And this is what we are we have put up to you that please check these details when you are handling an export transaction. This is very crucial. Next come, checking exporter premises details, GST and factory surfing address if applicable. If it's a factory surf container, checking his factory surfing information, uh, uh, permission, what premises he has registered under factory surfing permission is crucial. If it's an old permission or if he is forwarding you an old sh previous shipping bill to this effect, please ensure whichever part of the country his factory or premises is uh, registered, 
get it verified it is worth it whatever may be the cost but for your long term peace it's very important finally when you get a document with in your office first and foremost ask your team who is preparing shipping mail whether the product that is being exported is a prohibited product or it's a restricted product which you can very well check with the export trade policy and friends that even if you are not filing a shipping bill if you are just uh, issuing a bill of lading this is still worth it it is important that you check if the goods are prohibited as per export uh, foreign trade policy refrain from handling that export transaction unless there is an authorization from dgft this is very crucial and my request that at no point take this as a very important point next uh we just discuss this uh, the next is when you are presenting uh, preparing the shipping bill the hs float classification of the product eight digit when you are submitting that to customs prior to that which drawback entry is being availed of take a declaration towards it carry out e sanction of those particular declarations because even for half a percent of difference if customs comes across any deviation or any attempt to take a drawback which is not correct our friends in the industry have got notices and i am sure uh, shimali sir is out here before uh, i go on to the other day i will request him to speak and finally check the country of origin before making declaration why i am saying this that lot of our friends have got into trouble imported products they came claim drawback under section 75 imported products they claim rot tax or mes benefits which are available only and only to indian manufactured goods so first and foremost when you are filing a shipping bill ensure that in all cases that if export incentives are claimed drawback is claimed rot tax is claimed or any export benefits are claimed take a declaration that the goods are manufactured in india then you are declaring thereafter in the uh, uh, shipping bill and submitting to custom do not claim if you are in doubt do not claim any export incentive there are lot of instances where uh you know shokos notices are issued in such cases for our members these are the instances i will just run them through and thereafter request shimali sir to elaborate and guide us for a few minutes on this the recent ones which we have compiled them are fraudulent and dubious exporters exporters not being in existence the notices are received after 12 months 18 months 24 months nobody is able to trace the exporter scomet related goods being exported without authorization from scomet and this is a very serious issue because there have been complaints which have come from overseas and customs have issued notices not only to custom bro exporter and custom broker but also to uh, the entities who have issued the bill of lading consolidators ngocs carriers everybody next obligation of cbl are not being followed like authorization kyc is not being done 
over valuation of goods expand in incentives claim by deferred uh, remittances not being received export incentives wrongly being claimed has a does cargo being handled without proper authorization and without carrying out the processes radioactive substances a uh, radioactive products narcotic substances being handled without authorization even cases where logistic service providers not knowing the exporters at all and finally leo date greater than selling date these are been the recent show cause notices which have been given so before i move further shivani sir we request your kind presence on the screen please guide us that what our friends who are here the audience today are custom brokers forwarders uh, who are uh, employee members who are aita holders who are issuing their own bill of lading and they are multimodal transport operators also so what precautions should we do take and what are the pitfalls if we don't do that sir and what are the kind of shokos notices which have been issued over to you shripali sir can we request mr shrimali to switch on the yeah please uh, mr shrimali ji sir can you just switch on the camera and uh, request to kindly be... mr shrimali ji Please, I just give a call, please. Yeah. Anyway, till we get back uh, to Mr. Shrimali ji, there are some very important things which uh, Mr. Dushan Mulani has presented. And just to recap, I think so. We all should take the uh, importance of this uh, presentation. Uh, first thing, what came out was learn to say no. Means you should be good enough to say no. and wherever you feel that no it is not possible or it is something wrong you should say no and also alert our colleagues custom brokers across the industry the stakeholders and inform so that at least they don't fall prey to such type of services second thing when it comes to kyc where vision has really said i think so my uh, members take cognizance of the issues initial stage they will be with you employing everything services with you Slowly, slowly, one by one, they will start withdrawing one. Maybe for the sake of transportation, they will say your transportation is high. We will do our own transportation, which will be beyond your control. You do not have any control on such type of transportation mode, and you will only say that okay, my work is only booking, so I am not concerned about what is in the in the container. You, the custom broker will say I am only doing the other, so I have no. But when it comes to inquiry and investigation, we all will start playing important role. in providing this answers about a due diligence so don't get into such type of transaction which is beyond your control or which is out of your control unless and until you have an exporter doing his own transportation or you have a declaration that a transportation is done directly by the exporter in your hand so such type of contract should have a explicit written proofs with you while you are putting it across to the customs second thing even the exporter feels he says that it is been done by the consignee and the consign upon just transporter directly from there we are under impression it is the exporter who has appointed the transporter but the fact doesn't remain over there and then it comes to investigation nobody is aware of who is doing what and that is a time when it becomes difficult to answer such type of question to the customer as to what due diligence you have taken when you go to such 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 type of transporter you have nil details about it you are not aware of that whole transaction you are not aware of the transporter transport from whom you have received the container so please take note of such type of issues when you are offloading any custom care containers in any of the private yard it's a wrong thing you have to have it in the notified areas or you have to have it intimated to the customs immediately 
due to some emergency we try to just uh, see uh, see that there is no detention charges and we offload the container at any of the yards which is a wrong thing it may not be explicitly written in the law but when it comes to investigation all such type of questions arise and it may keep you into trouble have all these stages photographs like from stuffing till the end if the containers are reopened see that it is done with the photographs it is done with the videographs because nowadays such photographs will play very important role in proving a due diligence in the whole system one important aspect what mr dushan mulangi has brought to your notice scomet don't limit yourself stating that the scomet is only applicable for chemical my dear friends let me tell you there are also engineering products which are listed in this scomet list please in, look into those list engineering product or any such product which adds to the final product which can affect this scomet i think so you should be able to identify such type of things also the softwares which are used to prepare all such type of equipments are also falling under the scomet so don't be under the impression that only chemicals will come under this and i have no role to play because i am not handling chemicals come out of that illusion that it is none of my business so please get into the details we have already had one scomet webinar for our members in detail it is available on our aaa website to get in the detailing of this scomet how it has to be viewed what are the provisions to be taken to view this scomet into detail and how the references are be done with regard to the convention being held at the international level so kindly go to such type of um, uh, webinars which are already recorded and put on the aaa website for the members to view and study and learn from time to time with the updates uh, do we have mr simali ji on the line so, uh, he has just uh, uh, got a message that uh, chief commissioner has come there on an urgent visit and the export team has been called there immediately so right. once he is back from the chief commissioner he'll join so we'll start ahead on this boy so uh, friends uh, first and foremost regarding uh, uh, kyc and verification uh, we will take you through what are the important aspects under verification of identity uh we will first go there on that particular page uh, where section 99b of customs act is now very clear uh, there is a notification 41 of uh, 2021 it's a non tariff notification and you can see what are the important document which customs will require when they are carrying out invoking this verification of identity and compliance regulation 2021 it's very important this has been uh, incorporated under section 99b so i'll just request friends that way it is declared in serial 4 serial 4 i will come to that friends please go through this can okay. this will be all the different document that we are discussing right now will be shared with members i am sure priya ma'am will and arun sir will have them shared with all members of mtoy triple f will be doing so and so do uh, will uh, bcba will be doing this these are the documents which department is relying on so it is important all the more important for all of us to ensure that when we are handling a new exporter please take this documents this list will be shared this is a statutory requirement as given under notification we'll come to the next that if uh these are not done what are the kind of shokos notices which are issued well, i'll come, first come to the scomet one uh 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 sorry this is uh, yeah come come on this yes yes so uh take it so here uh you can see that good 
um, a person, a custom broker and logistic service provider was handling SCOMET related items. He was not aware about, he was not aware about the fact whether the items are covered under SCOMET or not. We are going to share after this particular uh, webinar a DGFT notification. Please keep it with your team that they are handling uh, shipping bill and export transactions who are issuing bill of lading to check whether item falls under SCOMET list or not. Here, the items which were there were covered under SCOMET, shipping bill file, uh, went in for examination in shed, the shed officer gave the late export order, goods go to the foreign country, from the foreign country, alert comes to Indian Customs, CBIC. CBIC hands this over to NCTC, which is National Center for Target, uh, and there NCTC alerted the stations from where export has taken place. Resultantly, officer who gave the let export order gets memo, custom broker, the forwarder, exporter, everybody in the entire chain get this particular Shoko's notice. Some of the licenses, uh, CB licenses were also suspended and it became a very big issue. At least 129 entities which we have come to know, uh, which were reported to us, had got the Shoko's notices. Now when a Shoko's notice is issued, yes, logically we can say that we were not aware and we filed the shipping bill. Logically we can say that we were not aware, the exporters gave the product, uh, papers, they came to us for booking and we issued a bill of lading. Now to undo that, going through the process of giving explanations, replying to Shokos, going through the hearing process, uh, coming out of that, if it is referred to custom broker section, policy sections, it's a very stressful time that our friends in the industry have gone through. It is worthwhile that keep a, a statutory notification ready with your team that as and when they get any export transaction to verify it with, with SCOMET list, whether it is appearing in that or not. And without, if it is yes, without authorization, do not handle these shipments because it can have repercussions internationally and friends uh, last week I had two of the forwarders whom we are right now helping them out legally a shipment have gone to uh, one shipment has go, gone to Spain other has gone to New York and it is lying there in that country impounded by the authorities, incurring cost, uh, detention and temperate charges in hundreds of thousand dollars. They are unable to do anything without SCOMET authorization nor able to get the goods back. Exporter is not willing to help out the forwarders and they are stuck because they had issued the document of transport that is bill of lading and every bill. So it's so much important for all of us.
we'll go to the next where obligation of cblr are not met and here this is the example where we are stuck up for our members here this is the case where you can see that it's a valuation case and the exporter and the broker have been implicated from our side bcb has represented very strongly that for valuation cases custom broker are not to be implicated fortunately the representations have been very well received and trocoses have been dropped against custom brokers but only in the cases where the broker has taken the proper authorizations from exporters you can see this particular operative aspect of the shokos notice that maintaining records and ensuring that verification of the exporters uh, whereabouts and getting the checklist of the shipping mill approved keep them in record this is going to help us however strong your case may be but keeping these papers digitally keep them digitally they will be useful for you all of us rather to reply to this particular shokos notices this will help us to strengthen our stand in front of authorities as and when we have a inquiry coming up at whatever cost and resources this is the most crucial aspect and my uh, our earnest request to all of you please maintain this we'll go to the next what do we have to do in such cases how do we proceed ahead we want to come out because the provisions which are there are quite stringent we don't want custom brokers uh, logistic service providers to go through these what are the checks that uh, would be prudent for all of us to keep and this is where we come to this slide friends if you are handling linger and has cargo please ensure that each and every paper as mentioned in imdg and iata regulations are followed to the last t not only as mentioned to all of you for has cargo dangerous cargo radioactive narcotics lot of our friends are handling pharma exports pharma export is one of the major export segment which our friends are handling and in that lot of products require this narcotic uh, drugs and psychopathic substances permissions please keep copy of that even if you are not filing a shipping bill even if you are just doing transport and issuing your, your own bill of lading these are very crucial documents keep them in your records digitally you may keep them but it should be available to you as and when required if you are filing shipping bills ensure these permits the dangerous good declarations material safety data sheets certificate of analysis everything should be uploaded in e sanchit without which do not handle the shipment and this is coming out of our experience past 24 months 
where our friends in the industry have undergone a lot of stress while dealing with this particular uh, uh, the kind of investigations which have taken place. SCOMED we have discussed. PGA NOCs, participating government agencies NOCs. Lot of products which require drug controller permissions, CDSCO licenses, permits, uh, wildlife crime control bureau for leather products or animal products which require animal quarantine, plant quarantine. Please ensure friends that compliances of these participating government agencies are very crucial. And that piece of paper where you take no objection because across the country some stations are still following manual permissions to these agencies. And it is very crucial that whether it's an online NOC or a manual permission, whatever format it may be, as a service provider, when you are processing your shipment, please train your staff not to carry out any shortcuts in this. Because sometimes our staff, because of urgency factor, or some other factor they try and push the shipments through please refrain from him do not handle any shipments or process them through customs unless and unless these NOCs are obtained and as I mentioned therein please keep NOC taken from these PGA agency participating government agencies in your digital dockets of your ERP or if you have not developed digital dockets, keep them, take a print and keep them manually because any audits taking place subsequently, any notices or investigation reports coming in, these are documents which will help us to sail through these investigations or reply to the Shoko's notices in a very proper and compliant manner. The next for all of us is a very important aspect. Filing of accurate EGM details which incorporate shipping belt details, container number details, the dates are very crucial. Any slight mistake in digits or details can lead to EGM mismatch and EGM mismatch once it's done your export incentive of your clients will be held up for a long long time and friends uh, we have represented this issue to CBIC because without uh, carrying out amendment, your EGM will not be rectified. And where the customs EDI system stands at present, if EGM is filed, no details therein can be amended. It gets sealed. After 1st July 2017, the day GST was implemented, in order to ensure that GST refunds are not claimed uh, in any manner post shipment, there is a barrier in EDI system. CBIC has been represented on this aspect, but that's a separate issue. Lot of our friends uh, in Amtoy, Triple FI, PCB are facing issues from their client because of, of this aspect. For employee friends who are issuing their document, multimodal MTO document BL, ensure that you carry out these checks at the time of filing of EGM. Because once EGM is filed in customs, rectification is not possible. 
likewise uh clean bridge are coming right now few of the location they are allowing on manual basis post shipment we will share few of these case laws uh in a day or two for our friends the next comes eway bill formalities under gst we handle lot of transport on behalf of our exporters it so happens that for some reason or the other lot of cases have come to fore where eway eway bill was not generated in the proper manner they have picked up the goods from clients stored it in warehouse of the service provider our members have stored in their warehouses the eway bill shows destination of customs uh, whether it's for example navashiva or air cargo complex mumbai or delhi or some icd whether the goods actually have traveled to the warehouse of the of our members and this has created lot of issues whenever there is a flying squad of gst coming up verifying document and they have landed into lot of issues some of them even financially it has affected our members so please be careful on these checks so friends these are important aspects which you need to go through and uh uh i'll come to one more important aspects where at the time of examination of export consignment for certain category of goods a special care needs to be taken these are category of wood goods where when we are presenting them to customs there have been instances where friends of our members have brought in the consignment in export uh, presented the goods for export however they have not carried out export examination as required as per the kind of transaction way it was required to be few of the transaction even if your shipping bill is facilitated under rms it is important that a uh, good uh, uh, that we carry out examination as per the scheme which is there for temporary exports even if it is under rms ensure to carry out 100% examination because your bond and bank guarantees which you furnish or the uh, notification that you claim at the time of import or if you are re exporting the uh, imported goods back bonds that you given you need to cancel them with customs ensure that these are carried out a 100% examination is carried out third country exports ata carnets ata carnets require detailed examination at the time of re export to close the carnet form with customs section 74 export when you are going to claim drawback on imported goods please examine the same under the uh, dc shared supervision advance authorization and epcg shipments they require certain kind of endorsement please take that pga nocs and if they have take you have taken upload them in the e sanchit so these are few important aspects you need to take at the time of export i think more or less we have touched base all aspects uh where last few months of uh, uh, last 24 months that our members have undergone some issues we have combined taken care of each and every those issues and presented to them and i am sure uh, priya ma'am over to you for any q and a
Thank you very much for that fantastic session, sir. A really knowledgeable one. We are flooded with questions uh, that shows that people were really attentive. We And I'm not too sure if we'll be able to take all the questions, but let me just show it on the screen and we can take one by one. Uh, is, uh, in the meanwhile, is uh, uh, DC Mr. Srimali in? Can we, do we want to see if he's in? No, uh, he's still with the Chief Commissioner. I've got a uh, message from him once he's free and he's uh, agreed to do a se separate session that uh, how to handle such kind of investigations or everything in one space. Maybe next month we, next one we can have him on with us and he'll be happy to do that. He's still with Chief Commissioner and Commissioner for some urgent matter. Yeah, okay. let's go to these uh, questions. Also, uh, Priya, just a request. Uh, there are a lot of questions I saw in the uh, Q&A box which are not related to compliance. They are uh, very generic questions. So please uh, ignore those and uh, just stick to the compliance uh, related questions, please. Yes, yes, Arunji, very correct. So, so there are, uh, Arunji, as of now, I've just uh, copy pasted all the questions. There are uh, almost about 35 odd questions which had also come earlier. We can choose which ones to respond now and then later on uh, send email responses to all participants on all the questions which they have sent. Fair enough. For this session, uh, Dushanbhai, please uh, yes. take the question. Yeah, so, uh, let's go to the first one, the AD code validation, how it is to be done. Surely, uh, the person here is Ms. Soumya. Surely, we will send across the public notices uh, for AD code validation, what needs to be done. Uh, next, we'll go to Mr. Anirudh Roy. He said that uh, authorization from, yes, if it's possible, take authorization. If not, ensure that you are authorized by the service provider who's given you that transaction to handle. Uh, please take it on email, uh, it will help you. Next, we'll know what is, uh, say, some of the better laws or tools to make shipping lines accountable. Uh, so, Mr. Atul Nahar, I think you need to be, uh, shipping lines have their own accountability as per the Customs Act, and they are following the same. Uh, we can go offline and uh, take in there. Uh, uh, Mr. Pritam Gaude, uh, this is to ensure that uh, exporter that you are handling, the client you are handling is a compliant exporter or not. It will come, uh, it is not part of CBLR, but whenever there is an investigation, what are the factors they check? And this is this will help you before you take a client whether he is a compliant client or not, whether he is filing his GST returns in time, what is this compliant check under GST, it will help you. The next will go Mr. Milan Nemade. We can claim export benefit when input material is imported in India. Yes, export incentive, then it is a purely manufactured item in India. Your input materials can be imported, but your final product, as long as your factory has manufactured in India, it's fine, you can claim. Next, Vono uh, is having an equipment which is malfunctioned and under warranty. The, for the supplier who was is willing to repair free of charge. The shipper is asking whether this can be under, uh, yes, you can export under uh, GR waiver, go across to your exporter's authorized dealer bank. Take a GR waiver, they will take <coughs> all the correspondences and you can export under GR waiver. Format of declaration from exporter for toward indigenous manufactured goods. Yes, uh, Mr. Hitin Sandev, uh, if the goods have undergone manufacturing, uh, documents are already there. The, you can very well take a declaration or a write up in this regard and keep it with your format. What is the manufacturing process he has undergone? Particularly, 
under advance authorization and epc that declaration are already there which we are furnishing to customers the next was a kunal is there any ruling how much profit an exporter can claim guidelines for checking valuation of so here export valuation uh, uh, custom valuation rules for export 2007 are very explicit uh, uh, if it's indian manufactured good it's the manufacturer will know his own profit margin but if an import goods are being re exported definitely uh, any rational margin of profit is allowed by customs uh next mr pawan can we take export incentives uh, like uh, on export which has been imported with payment of custom duty strictly no the goods as it is cannot be exported under section 75 drawback or hot tax only uh drawback available to this is under section 74 please read section 74 of customs act it is very clear it is showing any doubts please revert back we will clarify them to you uh vinod ji you are very correct in this uh for icds uh, there are lot of uh, egm egm errors which has led to uh hold up of export incentives and in this regard as you are aware triple f has made this representation to cbic that egm at icd should be considered as final and that's where we have covered up and uh, covered up in our uh, presentation also that as an forwarder or the then we need to be clear and absolutely accurate in our parameters that we feed for egm we'll come to next uh, we have been claiming raw time but not drawback or for imported goods and there are few taxes please go to raw tax scheme it's available to indian manufactured goods go through them any doubts please revert back mr avinash rane if comment list of temporary export project and reimporting back after completion whether such export requires authorization and license the answer in capital is yes there are under comment dgft has issued various circulars please go through them for temporary export and reimport please go through them if you don't find please get back to the secretariat we will publish them exporters ought to know themselves also because if they are dealing uh, having a business transaction under this they need to have their own uh, understanding of scomet rules uh, so may again here please can you differentiate between consolidator and trade forwarder cha as an employee member if you are issuing your document it's a separate issue or if you are just a freight forwarder issuing your own or just doing the freight booking there are differentiations and broker custom broker you know that if you are filing the bill of uh, shipping bill or bill of entry we are the custom brokers Mr. So Manina, we are facing issues to get IGST refund from exporters. Uh, the case is at DG Port with error code SB zero zero five. Please go across to your uh, place where you exported custom station. The, there is a section uh, uh, who are uh, XOS section. Uh, XOS DBK section who are dealing with SB zero zero five errors. if it's sb000 they need to write to gst in that case uh mark fernandez is a legend in the industry he is mentioned that when a shipping mile issues letter to offload container at the nominated empty yards and the same is done do stip nil need to safeguard is how does cb protect themselves i would request our uh, chairman mr shankar jinde to deal with this question 
See, shipping lines, containers are cleared under their bond. It is their responsibility to ensure it is re-exported within the period of six months or take the renewal from time to time. And whenever they have given us the offloading content, that is our duty and not beyond that. So once we offload that containers, we give them the receipt, it's already available. You have to have that depository of that container MTR into your system or into your custody. And that should be uh, suffice to have your uh, container return to shipping line. Then it becomes a shipping line responsibility uh, to have it exported or pay duty on the, the uh, on the containers. Yeah. Uh, we'll go to the next. Uh, Mr. Dilip, but most of work handled by custom brokers are through uh, forwarders and not directly by exporters. Exporters need to be educated through state forums. So, sir, I would say that uh, point number one, uh, majority of work is still being handled directly by custom brokers from exporters and importers. This is the requirement as per section 146 of Customs Act uh, and as per CBLR, we are supposed to take the authorization from exporters and hence it's a statutory requirement. Time and again we have circulated this. Whenever you are getting a work from your friends or other service providers, please ensure that you take that authorization from exporters. It is in our interest that we know the exporters. Uh, next, Mr. Natar uh, Krishnan Natarajan, how is uh, overseas? CB is not responsible for overseas payment. We have clarified, we have represented that for valuation purpose, there are case laws also now we have circulated to our members. In case if you have any showcos notices in this regard, we will have it circulated uh, to Triple uh, BCBA and Amtoy in this regard that we are not responsible for any valuation related issues of importer or uh, for exporters. Uh, uh, Mr. Vinod Sharma, I think your point is also covered up in this. We will be circulating the case laws. Uh, Mr. Milan Neva, is it mandatory for manufacturer having self sealing permission? to intimate custom in advance regarding stuffing of the container or such intimation to be submitted to the forwarder CHF. Please take this permission with you regarding intimation. The governing circulars 41 of 2017 is already there. Uh, there are public notices issued by uh, Jane CH uh, already which will be circulating to you. Uh, next, Mr. Krishnan Natarajan, uh, it is important. We are not responsible at all. We are saying that to check the compliance standard of your exporter, ensure that you go through them. You will come to know whether your exporter is compliant or non-compliant and whether to handle that client or not. This is for your own reference. We are not responsible out here. Uh, the tech, uh, yeah, the next is Mr. Prabhakar Moy, ADC issue, it's a generic thing. Next, uh, Sanket Kayani, challenges faced for open examination. It's a procedural issues. Uh, Mr. Rajesh Varma, complaint uh, required for exporting branded goods, Maggi noodles or MDH after uh, anything from uh, obtaining buying from, them from open market, yeah, yeah, buying them from open market. <coughs> uh, sir, in this, uh, we don't, as a custom broker, we have no role unless if you, as long as you are declaring the item correctly, there are no IPR related issues for export. There are as long as you declare the goods correctly, there are no prohibitions on these items at least. So, Vibho Ranan, a customs export air ocean tag pertaining to aerospace aviation industry that's a not related to uh, this particular webinar. The next is export for 
it's a generic i'm not able to make out what but fasa is not applicable for export and they, uh, which is also available on their website in case if somebody is holding up please convey emphatically that fssi provision are not available for export export for third country the query is not given third country exports are allowed prashant salvi export section 727 process part part of this webinar next Mr. Aditya Devudkar for export shipment, especially ready-made garments, when the exporter is claiming export incentives, uh, sir, drawback, Arun, as a hostel, please confirm made in India should be affixed on the cargo. If you are claiming some incentives for made in India, documentary proof should be made available that these goods have been manufactured in India. Uh, because these benefits are not available for export of uh, imported items. Hastan Sheikh, in quote uh, the All these questions which have come, uh, they've come before at the time of registration. So these uh, questions are more like they want to know what is the export compliance related to such and such things. So wherever. Yes. Yeah. Is the health uh, permission for tea premix? Uh, I think for any uh, food related item uh, which is linked to milk powder, you require EQ permission. Please go across to EQ website, you will get the answer. Is uh, Next, Mr. Ruben, uh, it is important to classify as cargo to be put to scanning. So, uh, it is also effect, it's very true. It's, I think it's more of an advice than a question. Uh, next, uh, Mr. Bini, need clarification on applicability of GST or LUD? Yes. Uh, yes. Need clarification on applicability of GST, forwarders, billing, overseas agent, import. This compliance has already been clarified. We'll share this notification with you. your it's too generic. Please connect for it. Any next question? TLG? Product restricted for export and advance authority obtained. Which states export product restricted? Would you still additionally need? No, if it's a, if you have obtained rest, uh, advance authorization, so a well called DZ advance license, then you don't need any restricted license. RCMC required by custom examiner. I think that is uh, required case to case basis. Risk mitigation for non acceptance of delivery at destination. Please, here it's important, Naisha Nasha, that at the get into your contracts with your exporter very diligently. These are few aspects. For non acceptance of delivery at the destination, get into proper contracts, contractual term with your exporter in black and white. This will save you. ROE underwater survey equipment. Uh, can you can you can you expand on the question because it's a very critical issue for NTOs or particular yes, area. yes. Uh, sure, Shantanuji. Uh, this mitigation for non-acceptance of delivery at the destination. <clears throat> Your consignment to process the shipment, it is sailed and reach the destination. Overseas buyer is not coming out for claiming the goods there. Ensure that when you enter into a contract with your client in India, that in such situations, your contract locally should be signed, accepted in such a manner and should have a clause that in your responsibility as a service provider should get terminated when the goods reach the overseas destination. Please put this 
clause in your contracts in bold and capital norms because lot of our friends are undergoing the stress where exporter is raising his hand that I am not responsible for any debris detentions. Please ensure this because this is going to save you and if it's a door delivery DDP or DD uh, you not I'm just sure in that... India, all over the world, there have been big cases against big lines by garment exporters and others. And there are big decisions from Singapore <clears throat> and UK courts on these matters. Yes, very true. And not only that, a lot of our Indian ex uh, service providers, logistics service providers had faced this issue. Uh, during uh, Russia Ukraine conflict, some of the. Arun, please draft it and circulate. Make a small draft and please circulate for everybody to consider. Yes. Sir, we work on it. Uh, in fact, we are just drafting a complete uh, set of uh, you know terms and conditions for everybody's reference. Yeah, but see what. Uh, see, sometimes when we wait for 100 things to do together, it takes too long. We can go one by one. These are critical issues. And here the criticality is then the amount is in 10 and 20 and 40 and 50 crores, particularly for the high volume exporters. Oh, sir. Working on it, sir. Uh, uh, next, uh, 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 Avinashji, this is a uh, Survey underwater survey imported under Indian company now export are being exported for to Saudi for after completion of project uh, same are reimported India in such case exporter if they are covered under SCOMET list please go through them issued by DGFT and yes if it is yeah, applicable answer is yes next. Uh, uh, Philo ma'am, these are pertaining to imports. When we uh, uh, please connect with us offline, we will answer to your queries and we have a good reply for you. Next, we'll go to Mr. Vipul Singh. Uh, processing to uh, process to get PGS certificate. Can you go down a bit, Priya ma'am? Uh, process to get PGA certificate, which PGA, any PGA, if your goods are covered, please ensure. Next, ECL is pertaining to import, so we can't take in this particular question set. Next. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll stop the questions there. There are, of course, 19 more, uh, rather many more questions and it will keep going on. Uh, but a fantastic session and... Uh, I'm, I mean, the number of questions says that how, uh, you know, wonderful the session was. People were attentive enough and we still have almost about uh, uh, 285 people who are online attending for the past one and a half hours. So we've not made them sleep as well. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, over to Shantanu, sir, for some closing remarks and uh, I think the attendance credit is entirely to Shankar and Dushan. Your name carries a lot, so we will expect more sessions from you. In fact, while we planned and just before the meeting, I said this is a big issue, big topic and of livelihood to people. So maybe we will have follow-up sessions. Arun and Priya ensure that we have follow-up sessions. Two of them are busy. So we have to see that we catch hold of them and get them for the session. I would say that when we say we had over 300 in my office, in fact, for almost every terminal, there are five or six people sitting in meeting room or conference room. So the real attendance will be much above that. So yeah. that's a very encouraging kind of gesture from members. So that will help us to do more for the members. Lastly, I would just add emphasis to what Dushyan says, because we were all interacting. Government is now very strict on governance matters. And we are the, what we can say, what is called fall guys or scapegoats. Big ones, nobody can take auction. 
small ones always get ignored so we are the right size for them to take strict action and make example of please be careful in what you do don't get tempted by greed and don't get tempted by fear also fear of losing customer fear of financial the consequences on all other sides are far more with this thanks again dushyant and shankar and it's nice you join from the triple fai office maybe next time we will try to join from aptoy offices so that we can project our offices and our commitment to association more and like last time for insurance we will have answers for all the questions and we will have them circulated to all the members shankar and dushyant uh, the insurance panel the lawyer and insurance panel they replied in two days so that's the uh, full mark for us so please answer the remaining question in two days so that we can circulate in 48 hours maybe while you are still in the office please reply then and priya ensure we circulate so we have request from mr abzal malbar wala so i have put him on panel uh, can i request mr abzal to yeah mr abzal bhai shankar bhai and uh, dushan bhai and shantanu it was a very very well educative informative session which has happened today and uh, i am sure there are more sessions like this will be conducted by the team and i would also request you know since we as an aka also a part of it we also would like to have any type of a you know joined uh, association is to discuss more about the air freight forwarding i'm not talking about the custom part of it which i think you all people are the expert but other than that you know if there is any query or anything about regarding the you know, air freight or anything that we would also be happy as an association to join with uh, triple fi amtoy and uh, bcba and to be a part of it thank you very much for in you know having this session and i would definitely waiting for more sessions like this to participate and you know to get my people trained free of cost thank you abzal we will soon have that session and hold neck of priya if you don't hear from us she is the one responsible for it thank you thank you sir thank you over to arun so uh, first of all it was a very interesting and very enlightening uh, session and i just like to quickly summarize of uh, as a reminder of what was discussed today uh, the importance of kyc uh, under customs uh, notification non tariff 41 by 2021 it is essential for us as custom brokers to abide by and follow it to the last day which was very clearly and very categorically mentioned and there is no two ways about it secondly there was a checklist which was shared we will share the presentation uh, after the session to with all the members uh, please go through it it is not about what is the methodology a lot of people uh, in the question and answer session were asking whether why should we verify the gst returns don't verify it if you don't want to but that's just the method of verifying the compliance of your uh, customer so if you have any other way to uh, verify it please go ahead so that's it's not compulsive it's not as per cvnr but antecedents of your customers have to be verified as per cvnr so if you have a better method to do it please go ahead also it was very very clearly mentioned that we should learn as custom brokers to say no. can i interrupt for a second arun sure sir what we have mapped and we have seen the gst and income tax returns indicator is a good measure for seeing our outstanding and bad debts <laughs> it is a clear indicator of what is going to happen so i think it's a good suggestion that we verify that and we have mapped that i can share our mapping with people that how one gets affected it affects your outstanding and bad debts immediately please carry on arun ultimately it is in our favor to uh, you know check it but uh, it is not as per cvlr that is the that's the point i'm trying to make uh, 
uh, again, one of the very important things that we should all learn to say no. If you are not comfortable with what the customer is providing, if you're not 100% confident of uh, the client, say no. A lot of us are scared as custom brokers, ki if we don't do it, somebody else will. Please, by all means, it's not worth it. Let somebody else do it. So learn to say no. I would sincerely, sincerely would like to thank Shankar Bhai and uh, Dushan Bhai for wonderful session. I mean, it's, as a custom broker, because most of us are wearing many hats, and almost all of us would be wearing custom broker's hat as well. So it's not just important for the freight forwarders as a custom broker and as a freight forwarder, it is equally essential that we should know this. And it was a wonderful session and probably we'll, we'll definitely bug you for having much more, many more sessions. I'd also like to thank the Triple FBI uh, Secretariat, Sagar Ji, Sumita Ji, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I would also like to thank our team that is, uh, you know, who, who has organized this. Shantanu sir has been our guide ever since. He's been guide not just for uh, Shankar Bhai and Dushan Ji, we are all his students. So uh, we learn a lot from him. Thank you, sir, for you know, guiding us throughout. Priya and Vasant, you are stars in any case. So I don't have to thank you. You are part of my team. And so is the Amtoy Secretariat, who has taken a lot of pain to organize this. And I would like to state that we had over 338 the last count I saw. And as uh, Shahto sir mentioned, that those were the only ones who had logged in individually. But as in his office, even in my office, there are six people who are uh, seeing this in the boardroom. So <laughs> the, the visibility was much higher. The numbers actually don't matter. But it was a very important session, and I think we should have more sessions of this kind, probably enhance the knowledge of every stakeholder. So thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, and uh, Abdul Bhai has raised his hand. Yeah, Abdul Bhai has raised his hand. Mark has to join. Mark I, I just, join if you are listening. I just wanted to request a AAA fan Amtoy. You see, most of our members, they are not members of Amtoy. So if they uh, permit me, once this is circulated, can I circulate among our members for such a useful thing? I just wanted to take their permission for that. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Has no proprietary ship, so it is for everybody to share, and we are more than happy to share it with everybody. Okay, thanks, and also we have this webinars, recorded webinars uploaded on the site. You know, when and when you require, you can always access this type of webinars. And also this comment webinar, which are very important to organize. You get the complete insight about how the matters are taken and how the showgirls notice the issue and how you have to address it. Uh, can, request, can I request Mr. Mark Fernandez to accept the panelist uh, request which we've just sent? Is he available? Uh, he just called there. Yeah, he's accepting. Yeah, he's, uh, you, you need to just promote him to panel, no, uh, Priya? Yeah, I have done that, but then it comes as a pop-up and he's supposed to accept it. I think now he's done. Just a minute. Yeah. Yeah, he's there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Mr. Mal, over to you. You may unmute yourself. So, Mr. Mark Fernandez is heading uh, IMC Indian Merchant Chamber. Uh, he's a chairman of the Logistic and Shipping Committee. So, uh, as always, he's always there forefront uh, along with Shantanu to take trade issues with customs. And we, wherever it is, he's been the voice of the trade for a very long time, like Shantanu. So, over to you, Mark. Yeah. Good evening, Shankar, Chairman Triple FAI. Dushan, Chairman elect, colleagues of Triple FAI, Shantanu of Amtoy, colleagues of Amtoy, and all our colleagues of custom brokers and Amtoy who are on the platform. Uh, hearty congratulations. It's a wonderful uh, webinar which makes very clear what role CBs, Amtoy, and service providers need to do or need to do. It is an action point. The so called power of authorities. You know, custom brokers are the easiest 
a scapegoat for every slur that happens in our country in the agreement system. And this webinar actually enables all custom workers to take cognizance of what needs to be done by ourselves to prevent ourselves being exploited. Over the last three years, we have been working tirelessly, getting the Indian exam industry to continue the economy to flourish, but not one trade body, not one, excepting CBIC, nobody has recognized the work done by the forwarders and the custom brokers. We always get blamed negatively, but we must look at how we have to safeguard ourselves. Shankar, Dushan, Chandanu, thank you for organizing this. I also learned a lot, but you know, in our field, it's always a learning experience. Every day, you may clear the same consignment, but you get new objections. So, all my colleagues who are young there in the field and the Gen X, don't get disheartened, don't get depressed with all the compliances that need to be followed. So long as you don't uh, take shortcuts and don't try to run after money, I can assure you, you will be safe. Thank you. Thank you again, uh, everyone. Thank you for, thank you all the panelists and uh, we'll stop the seminar now. Thank you.